When the gunships are circling overhead and the bots are raining down like communist hail, sometimes you need an angel of democracy to watch your back. I'm going to show y'all how combining long-range anti-tank capabilities with some close-range area of effect damage turns you into a guardian angel for your fellow Helldivers and the specter of death itself for the bots. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai. And today, we're going to be looking at how to support our team from both long and short range with an incredibly lethal loadout. The Plasma Punisher is going to enable us to either hold the line or clear a path for our squad, while the Spear is going to be sniping out those high priority targets so our team can mop up in peace. When you look out for your squad, they'll want to look out for you. Now that you know what the video is about, let's drop in and spill some oil. So y'all have a clear idea of what we're using and why. Let's take a quick look at our loadout before we get into how to use it. Our primary weapon is going to be the Plasma Punisher. This beast of a weapon takes down anything smaller than a Hulk in just a few shots, and is especially effective against Scout Striders, Devastators, and all little guys. Its large explosive radius means we can pick an angle and lock it down from any tyrannical toasters looking to fill our team full of holes. For those heavy targets our Plasma Punisher can't scratch, we're going to be relying on the spear to punch big holes in that heavy armor. It takes some time to get used to the range on the spear, but if you can find that sweet spot, it'll take out any Hulk, tank, tower, or gunship in a single hit. We can also use it to take out big fabricators or stratagem jammers from extremely long range, making it a devastatingly effective weapon on the bot front. The only real downside of the spear is its low pool of ammo, so pick your shots and let democracy guide your aim. Our sidearm is going to be the trusty senator, but feel free to swap this out for whatever you'd like. For stratagem support, we're taking a potent mix of Eagle airstrikes, the orbital gas strike, and the new and improved rocket sentry. I don't think I need to explain to y'all why the Eagle airstrikes are so good, but we'll be using them to tackle big groups of enemies and to take down fabricators so we can save some ammo on our spear. The orbital gas strike is a real hidden gem against the bots, but combined with the plasma punisher, it becomes one of the best stratagems in the game. With only a 75 second cooldown and a 20 second duration, this scrap recycler is always up when you need it. Mix in some stun grenades and the stagger from our primary and we have a low cooldown area of effect damage source that we can make the bots sit in until they melt into more steel for our super destroyers. You can also take out fabricators and detector towers as long as you call it directly in front of the target. Last but not least, we have our rocket sentry. Ever since this thing got buffed, I've brought it on nearly every single dive. It earns its place in this loadout with its extremely long range, explosive damage, and ability to take out gunships reliably. Plant this sucker around a corner and watch the kill count soar as you move on to the next objective or stand your ground and fight. As long as you don't sit out in the open, this beauty will do a lot of the grunt work for you and your team. If you've liked the sound of this loadout so far, then consider liking the video. That one click helps out a lot in my mission to spread cooperation and team play to the hell diving community. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for more team play videos. With all that out of the way, let's get to my favorite topic team play and how to use it. Our primary mission for this video is going to be understanding how to use a few key team play concepts against the bots. Those being using corners to funnel the bots into our various types of AOE damage. You'll see an example of this on the screen now. When to hang back versus when to push the attack based on what our team needs. And most importantly, how to get our team to regroup through our actions. This is going to be the primary focus of the video for the most part because what I've noticed a lot of the Helldivers talking about is that what do I do when my team doesn't want to cooperate? Well, I'm going to show you all that I don't know these people, but I can get them to go where I want based on where I'm attacking and what I'm doing. I don't need to say a word. I don't even need to ping to them. So we'll be covering that in depth throughout the video, but we'll also be giving some tactics and other stuff like I mentioned. But right here, you can see there's a big old bot drop being called down on D4 and G2. So I'm trying to help them out, but I quickly realize after my eagle just whiffs, I'm not really going to be able to help them without crawling over that wall and just it'll be a whole heap of trouble. So I, I'm just confident they can handle it. They've got the stratagems up. They should be able to handle a tank and a few bots. But I see K3 in the distance is probably struggling. So I'm making my way towards him. And what this does is it shows my team that me and K3 are going in the same direction. So they're going to want to go that direction too. You can see they called in the resupply. I doubled back, grabbed up the resupply because that 380 was blocking my way. And once we're all reloaded up, we can move together as a unit to go help out K3 rather than splitting up and going to all different parts of the map. We caught up to K3 and bailed them out of their spot, but K3 wanted to keep going ahead to this radar station. So I decided to go help them out. Now behind me, there's going to be a couple of gunships that are giving D4 and G2 a lot of problems. So I'm going to help them out with my spear from long range. This shows them that I'm looking out for them. 
and that means that they're probably going to want to stick near me for the remainder of the mission. When you're pinned down by gunships and you just see spear rockets coming out of nowhere to help you, it's a very strong incentive to stay near the spear user. And this is what I'm talking about, about guiding my team through my actions rather than any kind of communication. Body language is weirdly still a thing in even games like Helldivers. So I resupply up by calling in a new spear, which is something you're going to have to do a lot with this weapon because you run out of ammo constantly. But you see, G2 and K4, they managed, they ran towards me because I was helping them. They saw where the rockets are coming from. They saw me and K3 at the radar station. So they regrouped. Now they're continuing pushing. So I took out that tower and I'm going to hold the rear. I'm going to be the rear guard here because I know they were running from stuff. And I want to make sure that, that stuff doesn't shoot us in the back. So I drop down the orbital gas strike and a rocket sentry. This is good. And I'm sitting on a corner like I talked about. We use these corners to make our stratagems even more effective. So I have a rocket sentry holding down that angle. I've got a gas strike ticking away. I don't really need to worry about that anymore because I don't see the kill counter going up. So that means there's all, everything that was over there is dead. So I can move up a little bit, advance with my team, and kind of work my way towards whatever they're doing next. I also want to stick near my team for the simple fact that the spear is really ammo hungry. I need to be near people so that when they call down the resupply, I can get it. But I hear somebody threw an autocannon sentry in the back here, and I don't want it to die, because the longer that autocannon sentry's up, the more it's protecting us. So I throw out a few plasma punisher shots until my teammates move up, and then kind of help me out take my position. So I decide to push towards this fabricator, because I see it's there, and I'm going to just start raining down on this rocket sentry until one of my teammates is going to take this thing out with a spear shot out of nowhere. Like I said, you see that, it makes you feel good. I went to take out a side objective with G2, it was that outpost I saw or I destroyed in the intro, but I noticed that my other teammates, they are really pushing this heavy fabricator, so I figured that they could use some fire support. So I move up and I'm focusing in on that corner in between the outpost and that rock outcropping. This is what makes my AoE damage so incredibly effective, y'all, and you can do this on any planet. You just look for a corner and you sit there until the bots come to you. It's not quite like the bugs where you can get overwhelmed. They will file in all at the same time and they'll clump up as they try to shoot you, which makes your AOE damage just supremely effective. Now here, I'm not going to run into that because Spear needs some distance. If you try to fire this thing too close, it's probably going to miss. So instead, I'm going to focus on taking out the gunships because those are going to be a big threat to my teammates on the ground, and I'm pretty well equipped to handle them. So I move back, I get in some good cover so I can reload safely because if I die, then well, their cover is gone. So I get my reload up, I see them getting taken out, so I'm not firing my spear. We have to conserve our ammo. So I'm watching that gunship, I'm looking to see if it gets taken out. Uh, my friend here takes it out with a laser cannon. Around the corner, see a tank, I back up. G2's got some faith in me, he sees me running away, he backs up as well. I get some distance, take that tank out. So now I've cleared out the gunships with G2, which has cleared the path for K3, and we've able to, we're able to push through this huge bot drop and that big old gunship patrol like it's basically nothing. Everything's focused on killing K3, and he's doing a good job of staying alive. So that makes me and G2's job a lot easier. We're able to take out all this heavy armor, all the gunships, and all the little bots, just the two of us. Now again, we're on a corner, right? So I throw out that gas strike and a stun grenade onto that big old thing of factory strider, on big old thing of scout striders. And you'll see the kill count there just starts ticking up. That is an entire patrol taken out with a 70 second cooldown and one grenade. I just want y'all to, I want that to sink in for y'all and so you'll start using the gas strike. It's so good. As a general rule with this loadout, I like to hang in the back because the spear is more effective the more range you have. And then I also want the enemies to be coming to me. So here I really want to help out D4 and K3, but I'm not going to rush in and start blasting. Instead, I'm looking for these big drops of devastators and I'm going to take those out. Now, D4 just died, so we're going to have to reinforce him over here, but I'm going to use this corner to try to funnel anything that's going to come near me at this spot. And I'm also looking for heavy armor, because I hear tanks, I just don't see them yet. Tank comes into frame there, and I'm able to back up a little bit. I'm just checking to make sure I'm not going to get blasted by the cannon. As soon as that cannon shot doesn't come out, I know I'm safe to run up, grab my resupplied spear, and take this thing out. Now this is something with a spear you're going to have to just accept. Sometimes it does not kill the thing in one hit. But you see that little tickle from G2's laser? 
it, it just died. So even if it doesn't kill it in one shot, it is going to be real low health, which makes it very easy for, you know, cleaning it up. Now, y'all know I'm the team play guy. I love to stick with my team. I love to just cooperate with random players because it makes me feel good. But I do acknowledge there are plenty of times in the game where you're going to get split off from your team. So this is one of those situations. We've got D4 and K3 both pushed way up. G2 and I are kind of further back. Now, I see in the distance there that there are laser towers shooting at my squad. So I'm going to make those my first priority because the spear will always kill them in one hit. Just one quick spear shot and I can take out these towers. My team can deal with everything that's up front there and I can take these high priority targets out from a incredible distance away and keep them safe at the same time. And this still gives you that morale reinforcement of, oh, I have spear overwatch, I'm good. Now I see this gunship patrol coming in and I know I wanna go up with my team. It's, now it's time to push. I took out the towers. I don't wanna get too far. I don't wanna get split off. So I'm gonna push up and I'm going to let my rocket sentry in the back handle anything that's coming towards us, which is going to include that big old gunship patrol. I'm going to run up and toss an eagle at that factory strider I spotted, but I'm not going to be pushed up with my team for too long. I see that napalm strike took out a big group of bots. I've got a feeling they have a handle on this stuff, and I know that there's those gunships behind me. So you see the rocket sentry take one out there, and I'm making this my job now. I'm on the rear guard action. G2's doing a good job taking that one out with a laser cannon, but three of them went down to me, my rocket sentry, and the spear. And this is really great for keeping your team safe and removing a giant headache that I see a ton of Helldivers struggle with, is gunships. Spear just makes them into a joke, especially you take the rocket sentry. And I, since I'm stood next to a resupply, I'm just going to shoot at this factory strider until it's dead. Because, well, I just saw it fall over, so I didn't need to waste the next rocket. But I'm going to take that second resupply with no shame, because I need it to help these people survive. With the gunships cleared and our rear pretty much safe, I see there's another patrol on my right, but we're pretty much good. I'm gonna circle around this big old 380 barrage because I noticed that the fabricators have not been destroyed yet. So this likely means they're at the back of the fabricator complex. I don't wanna run through that hell on earth that's right in front of me, so I'm gonna take the long way around and see if I can get a bead on that last fabricator and take it out. This is because once the fabricator's dead, once everybody sees that heavy fabricator destroyed, they're not gonna wanna stick around here. They're gonna start to think about where to move next. So by taking out this one fabricator, or at least hunting for it, I'm encouraging my team to move on to the next objective and not get stuck in an endless cycle of fighting the bots just all the time. That's probably happened to y'all in a lot of your games where it just seems like endless waves of bot drops, devastators, factory striders, all just ruining your day. Well, this is how you prevent that. You're gonna need to take out the objective that your team is focused on because once it's dead, they're likely to move. I'm not saying it's gonna happen every single time, but odds are once the thing that they're trying to destroy is destroyed, they're gonna be willing to move on. And they're probably gonna wanna move with the people that are around them. So you see, we're all together, so this makes it real easy for us to move together as a unit now that this heavy fabricator has been destroyed. There was one more primary objective I didn't bother showing y'all because I just threw an eagle at it and blew up. Nothing really happened. But now we're going to be fighting our way towards extraction. And what I want y'all to notice is that who's with me most of this game? It's been G2. And the reason I like to think for that is my actions have showed him that I'm a good team player. I'm willing to throw stun grenades to stop you from getting shot to pieces by a heavy devastator. I'm willing to use all of my ammo to take out a big patrol of gunships to keep you safe. Because I'm willing to do these things, people pick up on it, even if it's just subconsciously. They'll be more willing to work with you, they'll be more willing to stick together if they know you have their back. And the only way to really do that is to demonstrate it through your actions. And don't get mad at your teammates, y'all. Unless they're being, like, obnoxious on purpose, there's no reason to ever have animosity towards your fellow Helldivers. We are in this together. We are fighting for Super Earth and managed democracy and bringing glory to humanity. Anything else is just extraneous and not needed. So here, this is where I make a big mistake, and it's going to cost me a bit. But I've been talking about sticking my team the whole time. But for some reason, I just got stubborn, and I really wanted to go that direction. I was like, these bots are not going to stop me. So I'm going to use this to talk about what to do when you're alone. 
So we're still going to be using all the same tactics. I'm going to be using corners to use my AoE damage to take out big groups of enemies like you can see here. But I've learned a lot about how to play by myself as I learned how to play the game by soloing all the way up to Helldive. And then a lot of my early videos are solo Helldive content. So I'm very familiar and I'm very comfortable with being on my own, which might surprise some of y'all given that, you know, all my videos recently have been about team play. But doing solo hell dives, I'll talk about this in another video, but it does help you a lot with developing the fundamental skills to be a good hell diver. So here what I'm doing is I'm making sure I'm using any kind of funnel I can, and I'm taking out anything that might cause me issues while I'm looking for ammo and stuff, because I'm alone. If I call in a resupply right now, y'all, brand me a traitor and hit me from orbit. Like, there is no reason for me to ever do that. I would rather die than take an entire resupply from my team. So instead, I'm prioritizing my targets because I'm very low on ammo. I think that was my last spear shot. And I've also used most of my stratagems. So instead, I'm just going to use what I can, deal with what I need to, and then I'm just going to book it. I'm just going to get out of here. Honestly, I haven't spent too long just shooting these berserkers, but I see that Hulk and that kind of jogs it and makes me realize, oh, it's time to go. So I throw out a stun grenade and I just head towards my team, hop on Pelican 1 and get the hell out of here. And that's the run, y'all. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've learned something, especially about the nature of team play and how to get your teammates to work for you through your actions. Be kind to others, they'll be kind to you. It's that old golden rule. We still abide by it even in the age of managed democracy. But we managed to drop a 400 kill banger with this one by utilizing our area of effect damages on different corners to take out big patrols. We threw our eagle airstrikes with a good amount of accuracy and we just wiped the floor with these stupid bots. So until next time, Commissar Kai, signing out.